This here is the closest you can get to an upgrade Steam Deck 2 right now. After almost a year going back and forth, it's finally possible to double the OLED Steam Deck's RAM. It's about damn time. And the results were way more interesting than what I expected. Like, this is more than ever not a complete waste of time. Let me explain. So last year, we took a look at a modded LCD deck, and it actually did end up showing a noticeable FPS bump over the stock model without really any major downsides. Still clearly wasn't surpassing the more efficient OLED deck. Frame times did go down, which inherently offered a smoother experience, but that was about it. I really couldn't find anything that was pushing the needle that much at the start until I took this on a flight with a battery bank. I wanted to test this out with more RAM heavy titles, and at the same time, if I was going to be arrested by TSA for bringing possible explosives on a plane. I didn't realize it looked like a bomb until you guys pointed it out so much. So anyways, I booted up Hogwarts Legacy and noticed walking through the castle there was much less stuttering when loading textures going from area to area. I tested BeamNG, which uses a physics engine to simulate vehicle dynamics, which happens to eat RAM for breakfast. Both these stock decks had warnings that they were running out of memory while playing this, and when I put them all head to head again, you could see where the performance was way better on the Steam Deck with double the RAM. Significantly more stable, no crashing, and actually an improvement. But still overall, it wasn't really doing much compared to the OLED other than those specific scenarios. So now today, having the benefits of this upgrade plus the efficiency of OLED, it's yielded the best results yet. And if you don't know how the Steam Deck manages its RAM, let me give you a little cheat sheet. So most handheld devices, including the Steam Deck, use what's called an APU. This is essentially the CPU and GPU on a single chip. You get all the computing tasks and graphics workloads handled by the same processor. This also means they both have to share RAM at a 50-50 split. There is no dedicated VRAM. CPU gets half, GPU gets half. So what happens is if you have 16 gigs of RAM and the CPU at that moment needs more than half, it'll take it away from the GPU and that can cause issues. If there are any memory management stutters, you can get lower frame rates, worse frame times, crashes. Now, if you have double the RAM, it's pretty self-explanatory. Less stuttering, better FPS, and a smoother experience on paper. Right off the bat in Cyberpunk, head to head with a stock OLED and a modded OLED, you can actually see a performance boost. These are both running the stock Steam Deck graphics preset, and we have roughly a three to five FPS bump with the mod. I noticed less stuttering overall, a higher max and average FPS with lower minimums. And BeamNG is also a pretty similar story with a slight advantage in performance with the exception of really intensive scenarios in game where you see the modded deck utilizing over 20 gigs of RAM. The stock OLED just crashed in this test. So these are the areas where having 32 gigs of RAM can really be clutch. Another area where this mod excels is when you're playing a heavily modded title. Baldur's Gate 3 had a slight FPS bump over the stock OLED. Act 3 of this game still obliterates Steam Decks, but it was an overall improvement. Battery life, on the other hand, also didn't really seem to be affected. I was getting roughly the same screen on time as the stock deck. The games that push the deck's performance are really the areas where you're gonna be able to take advantage of this. Like Elden Ring was running flawlessly, locked at 45. Slight bump. No Man's Sky also noticed a nice little boost in performance. Nothing insane, but consistently beating out the stock OLED Steam Deck. Where the performance differences started to fall off a bit was games that were really not challenging to run, top-down shooters, low-poly indie games, the types of titles that really don't take advantage of extra RAM, so obviously you don't see much of a difference in those high FPS ranges. Once you start lowering the quality of the textures, it starts to make this mod less useful, especially on an 800p display at this size. So I've been using a portable OLED monitor for testing from UpPerfect. This is not a sponsor, it's just a really solid panel. And this is where I feel like you can really take advantage of the additional RAM. Uh, I also tested the typical desktop experience on this for those of you that do use this as a general machine. More Google tabs, obviously you have more RAM. So I noticed you could use Spotify in the background, run light background tasks without as many hiccups when you were gaming. I've yet to do a really deep dive with this regarding loss of scaling plugins, emulation, or input latency testing, because these are all uncharted waters. You have to be aware this is using a custom modded BIOS in order to get this to function correctly. You have to desolder the existing RAM modules and resolder in new ones. It's pretty overkill. Huge shout out to Isaac at SlickBuys for working on this project. I'll have his links in the description if you wanna check him out. And to channel sponsor Ugreen for always supporting all these random projects with dope tech. They just dropped their new 100 watt desktop charger. This one's actually been super convenient for me since I've been able to charge multiple devices at once. It supports up to six devices. You can fast charge through four USB-C and two USB-A ports. And it supports power delivery 3.0, QC4 plus, and delivers up to 65 watts of power from a single port. You can charge an M2 MacBook Air from dead to 50% 
in 30 minutes. I just like having one charger for most devices so I don't need to carry around four different bricks in my bag. And this one happens to be compact on your desk so you can keep your setup neat and clean, fresh from any clutter. I've been using it lately to charge the handhelds and it's been fantastic for keeping everything super simple and efficient. There's multiple systems in place that control current, temperature, so there's no downsides if you're fast charging. I'll drop links below to all their stuff if you're interested in picking anything up and you can get up to 40% off during Prime Day deals. So would I recommend this mod to most people? There's only so much you can do with the existing Steam Deck hardware and this is pushing the needle further, but you really don't need to mess with the stock experience to get the most out of the Steam Deck. Unless you're this definitive power user that plays super heavily modded games or someone that wants the extra RAM as a general PC upgrade, it's okay. It's better than the LCD upgrade, but for most people, it's like just a fun what if. Hope you guys enjoyed watching this and if you have any questions, concerns, or comments, drop them down below. Big thanks for watching.